we have a body in our mind, mapped in the brain, and we have a mind in our body. And Descartes kind of separate the two, but there's never a time where the body is influencing the mind. There's never a time where the mind is influencing the body. In fact, they're one and the same. So the majority of people's thoughts uh, are connected to certain feelings that influence very specific hormonal centers in the body. For example, if you think an angry thought, you are going to release certain chemicals that activate your adrenal system. You're going to begin to activate survival systems. If you feel suffering, if you feel pain, you feel guilty, you produce a different biochemical reaction, produces different hormonal centers to be activated. So most people's thoughts and feelings are taking most of the energy of those thoughts and storing in the first three energy centers of the body. You will call them chakras, but the first three centers are centers of survival. The procreation, uh, consumption, uh, and, and fight or flight is how most people have survived the majority of their lives. In other words, in survival, it's not a good time to open their heart. So very little people actually make the effort to open their heart. And most of their thoughts and feelings are activating these lower centers. So the majority of the body's energy is stored in these first three centers. So then 95% of that energy stored in the body has to be liberated and driven back to the brain. So we do this breath as a way to pull the mind out of the body or ascend the energy. And yogis would probably love this breath because they have a lot of conscious control over the intrinsic muscles of the body. So the breath is about contracting those intrinsic muscles, the muscles of the perineum, the front neck muscles we use for elimination, uh, the muscles of our, our lower abdomen or upper abdomen. When we inhale through our nose and we squeeze these muscles, what we're doing is we're pulling that energy from those lower centers up into the brain. Now, when you inhale, normal, when we're just hanging out and breathing, when you inhale, the sutures of your skull slightly open up, and your bone, the base of your spine, called your sacrum, that upside down triangle, actually flexes back. So when you inhale and those sutures open up and your sacrum flexes back, the spinal fluid drains. When you exhale, the sacrum flexes forward and those sutures close and it pushes the fluid up. And so, inhaling and exhaling begins to propagate a wave. Now, cerebral spinal fluid is made of proteins and salts in solution. And proteins and salts in solution have a charge. When you drop them in solution, they have a negative or positive charge. So now, when you begin to inhale and begin to pull that cerebral spinal fluid up towards your brain, and you accelerate those charged molecules, according to physics, when you accelerate a charged molecule, you create a visible, an invisible field called an inductance field. So now there's information going from your brain to your body and from your body to the brain all the time. But when you do this breath and you start accelerating those, those charged molecules, you create this inductance field moving in a certain direction and all of a sudden, all that energy from those lower centers start moving up to the brain. If you do this properly and you have a little passion, you start moving this fluid, there'll come a moment where the sympathetic nervous system will switch on and merge with the parasympathetic nervous system. And when that happens, all of a sudden, all the energy you use to make the baby, all the energy you use to digest the meal, all the energy you use in a stress response, instead of being released out chemically, it's being drawn up to the brain. All that energy goes right up into the limbic brain, and it hits a gland called the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a very specific gland that makes serotonin and melatonin. And when that energy strikes that gland, all of a sudden it begins to produce very powerful metabolites, sister molecules. And all of a sudden now the brain becomes super lucid. And the brain waves that we start to measure are very, very high gamma brainwave patterns. Now the person is super conscious. Now there's more energy in the brain. When that happens, whatever's happening between your ears becomes more real. And in a sense, you're having an orgasm in the brain into a state of ecstasy. So then you're transmuting anger, you're transmuting fear, you're transmuting guilt. And so then the liberation of that energy, all of a sudden from this center all the way to the top of the brain, <laughs> begins to create a powerful polarity, positive charge of the head and negative charge of the tail, and the body becomes like a magnet. And all of a sudden you start to produce this invisible electromagnetic field.
now the body is liberating energy. Now, once the pineal gland signal sends a direct signal to the pituitary, the pituitary begins to release two very powerful metabolites of oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin signals nitric oxide, nitric oxide causes the arteries in the heart, begins to swell, and all of a sudden you feel an incredible amount of love. Oxytocin is the love chemical. When you feel love and gratitude, all of a sudden you're in a state of receivership. And then there's a reverse field that begins to come in the other direction. We've measured this. And that second chemical is called vasopressin. And what vasopressin does is it causes the cells to draw water. So people with chronic bladder infections, people with diverticulitis, people with food allergies and, and um, indigestion, acid reflux. They do the same breath, and it's just the liberation of energy. Once that energy starts to move, and it starts to travel up to the brain, we've measured this on so many brain scans, we can actually predict when it's going to happen. When they inhale, and they pull that energy all the way up into the brain, I ask them to hold their breath and squeeze those muscles a little bit more. And when you hold your breath and squeeze those muscles, you increase what's called intrathecal pressure. And intrathecal pressure is what you use when you lift something up and you push against your insides. Well, the pineal gland sits right at the base of the third ventricle. And inside the pineal gland are these tiny little calcium carbonate crystals. They're stacked around the atrix. They're stacked on top of each other. And if you find the research, and I found it, the pineal gland has been called a neuroendocrine transducer of piezoelectric properties. The piezoelectric effect is when you take a mechanical stress and you apply it to some crystals and it begins to produce an electric charge. So then the act of inhaling and bringing that breath all the way to your brain with passion and squeezing those muscles, and at least can do this really well, and holding your breath, you're exerting pressure against that pineal gland. And as you start to compress those stacked crystals, you begin to produce a piezoelectric effect. And you're, now you're taking the mechanical stress and you're turning it into electrical charge. Now you're electrically activating those crystals. And those crystals are very sensitive to frequency. And all of a sudden, when they become electrically activated, the pineal gland becomes like a radio antenna. And now it can pick up frequencies faster than the speed of light. Now, why is that important? Because your pineal gland right now is determining whether there's enough light in this room. And if there's enough light in this room, it'll make a, a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And serotonin gets your brain up and awake and you can function with conscious awareness. But when the light diminishes and there's an inhibition of light, serotonin is transmuted into melatonin. Melatonin is the nighttime neurotransmitter. It helps us to go to sleep. But serotonin and melatonin are directly related to the wavelength of visible light. So then we're producing certain rhythms and chemicals in our normal waking day based on our environment. But when the pineal gland becomes electrically activated, it literally begins to produce a resonant electromagnetic field. And now it begins to send a signal out and this crystal stretch until it can't stretch anymore. And then the field reverses and it compresses those crystals and all of a sudden, a little antenna that up right up in your pineal gland. And now it can pick up frequencies that are faster than the wavelength of light. It's called the quantum. And all of a sudden now it will pick up a frequency and transduce. And a transducer is like a television. It takes a frequency and turns it into a picture. And all of a sudden the person has an inner vision. And that inner vision is more real than the world we're sitting in right now. And melatonin then starts to turn into some very powerful chemicals. One of them, or two of them, are the most powerful antioxidants known to man. Anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory. Uh, another chemical is the same chemical found in hibernating animals. Mm -hmm. No sex drive, no appetite, no preoccupation with the outer world, the inner world starts to become more real. The body moves into stasis. It's the same chemical where the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. Take a molecule, tweak it again. You have a benzodiazepine that fits in the same receptors. What it does is it suppresses the survival centers in the brain. Take the molecule, tweak it again, and now you have the same chemical found in electric eels. You very powerful biophospholuminescent chemical. Tweak it one more time, and now you have dimethyltryptamine, the most powerful hallucinogenic known to man. And now, 
person's going on a vision. And that's why it's called the third eye. I call it the first eye because now it's releasing its elixirs and we start having very profound dimensional experiences. So only the mind of the body is beginning to liberate energy and begins to produce a magnetic field, electromagnetic field. But when the latent systems switch on, now we're going to access information no longer from our three-dimensional reality. We're going to access that information from the field and the brain is going to begin to transduce the frequency carrying information in the very profound imagery. The person's going to have a full-on sensory experience without their senses and it's going to be more real than the world we're sitting in. Yeah, I've been knocked unconscious, I don't know, maybe hundreds and hundreds of times I see a flash of light, that energy goes right in my brain and wow, it's the most blissful experience of my uh, and sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't and my, my body will do all kinds of crazy things because it's information coming into the body and it's got to be able to process that frequency. So where there's, where there's energetic blocks or there's a, a pathway that it can't move through, that energy is going to have its way with the body and it's going to cause the body to do all kinds of wild and crazy things. And it's just information. I mean, and, and our ability, we will get two choices when this happens. And I mean, from my experience anyway, when something unusual happens, people always say, oh, I want the unknown. I want the unknown. When the unknown comes, a lot of people aren't ready for it because it scares the living chain lights out of You have one of two choices in our brain scans. We've actually seen this. A person who gets afraid will move from that elegant state into a high beta brainwave state, a stress state, and they'll disconnect. They'll, they'll come back to their body and, and they'll, they'll lose the experience. Others, they relax and surrender into it. And the more you relax and surrender into it, the less you resist it, the less impedance there is, the less uh, physiological um, conditions we have. So when it happens, we have to really surrender and relax into it. And, that sounds very easy because, uh, uh, but a lot of times it's not. A lot of times it's more difficult than we think because it's it's a very powerful frequency. And the feeling that you have is a tremendous amount of love. And it's not chemical, it's electric. And you can feel it in every single cell of your body. That's the side effect of that we've seen. It's a biological upgrade. We've seen people's eczema, tumors, uh, the Parkinson's, the rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto syndrome, really go away after one biological upgrade. It, it, all disease is low in the frequency, an incoherent message. And you can say in that moment, when that latent system switches on and those microtubules start vibrating, you feel such a level of coherence and order. You feel connected to something greater that you want to have that experience again. And so then the next time you do that breath, you have more intention, you have more passion, and you're literally drawing that energy up into your brain. And, and literally, uh, one woman said that her brain scan was off the chart. She said, another one of these and I don't need a husband. I mean, she had so much energy in her brain, a full-on ecstatic experience. So people are doing it, and the side effect is that the body begins to change dramatically. If you could use the same muscles right now, contract the muscles you use for elimination, front and back, and you were to lift those muscles up, you would be lifting up your pelvic floor, your perineum. Those are the muscles we're going to use to contract the energy related to the first center. If you were to pull your abdomen in and touch your belly button to your spine, you would be contracting the second center, where you would begin to milk the energy out of the second center. If you contract your upper abdomen, now you're contracting the muscles that are related to that center. The act of inhaling through your nose while you contract those muscles, coupling those together, is the act of pulling that energy where we want it to go, right to the top of our head. So if you took your finger and you were to place it on the top of your head and work your fingernail in there, and then take your finger away, if you can keep your attention there, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So that's your target. So the idea then is to close your eyes and to inhale at the exact same time that you inhale to lift those muscles up and in and with the intention of pulling the mind out of the body, liberating energy, pulling that energy all the way up into your brain. As you inhale, one slow, steady breath, follow it from your perineum, through your lower abdomen, through your upper abdomen, through your chest, through your throat, through your brain, all the way to the top of your head, and when you get to the top of your head, hold 
your breath and now squeeze those muscles a little bit more and just pump that fluid up against the back of your brain and hold it. And then you exhale, relax, and feel. Now, in the beginning, when you learn anything, you have to practice it and it's mechanical. But as you keep practicing, it will become more intuitive and less step-by-step, it will become one motion. So the act is inhale at the same time, perineum, lower abdomen, upper abdomen. And as you inhale, you follow that breath all the way up through your chest, through your throat, keep inhaling through your brain, to the top of your head, then you get to the top of your head, drop your shoulders down, straighten your spine, squeeze those muscles a little bit more, put your attention on the top of your head, and just push that forward a little bit, compressing the crystals of the peeling gland, hold for a few seconds, and then relax and feel it in your brain. Now, I would recommend when you do this to play some music that has no lyrics, but has some drums or has some uh, music that you can interpret as the movement of energy. Uh, where if the energy strikes your brain, don't be afraid of it. It's just the liberation of energy. Let it happen a moment, your eyes closed, and do it again. I would recommend five minutes in the beginning and work your way up to ten. Usually people who do it properly have a very significant amount of energy in the brain. We now know that this breath creates more brain coherence. It increases the amount of energy in the brain. It activates the autonomic nervous system. And our brain scans show that it stimulates the pineal gland. Those are all the important things that help us to experience.